Hello guys, my name is Lazaro and today we're going to be doing a lead code problem. This problem is called symmetric tree. Given the root of a binary tree, check whether it is a mirror of itself, i.e. symmetric around its center, and in here they're defining the center as the root. So if we look at the first example, the root is 1, and then 2 is symmetric with the 2 on the other side. The 3 is symmetric on the 3 on the other side, and then 4 is symmetric with the 4 on the other side. So you can kind of, you can exactly think of this as a mirror, or you can think of it as this line where you're going to be folding the tree, and if you were to fold it, all these nodes, uh, they should line up and they should have the same value. In the second example, if we were to mirror it at the middle, or if we were to fold it at the middle, we will see that it doesn't line up at all. Because this 3 is supposed to match with a node on the left, it's supposed to match with a left node of this 2 on the other side. But instead, it's a 3 and a none. So in here, we have a node, and then on the other side, we don't have a node. Therefore, by just, by just looking at this, we know it's false. We can also look at the left node of the 2 uh, in the left subtree. There is no left node for the 2 in this left subtree, but there is a node, there is a right node on the 2 in this right subtree. So once we do that mirroring or that folding, uh, we'll be comparing a node with a non-existing node. And since they are not the same, uh, we return false. So now they have a follow-up, could you solve it both recursively and iteratively? I'm going to be doing this recursively and I'm, I'm going to challenge you guys to try to do it iteratively. Uh, it should be pretty much the same sense. Uh, instead of a implicit stack, just use an actual stack. An implicit stack comes from the fact that we're going to be doing it recursively. All right, so let's get to the drawing. Uh, there is a couple of things that I just want to point out and make sure that everyone sees. So let's get to that. So of course our root is 1, when we have a 2 on the left, and a 2 on the right, then we have 3, we have 4, we have 4, and we have 3. So this might be the ugliest tree I've ever drawn, uh, so please work with me. In fact, I'm going to see if I can rotate it and see how advanced I am. All right, that worked out pretty well. Uh, and of course, we're gonna be mirroring it from the middle, so you can think of it as mirroring it from right here. And if we were to fold this, the two would fall with this two over here, the three would fall with this three, and then the four with that four. So this is symmetric. But one example that we want to look at is when they are not symmetric. So if we were to erase this three, and we were to do the exact same mirroring from the middle. But we see the 4 still goes to the 4, so that's correct. The 2 with the 2, and then the 3 goes with nothing. So if we're looking at a node that's existent, and, a, and the other node is not existent, we know we can instantly return false. But now, what if we were to erase this 3? What do we do in this scenario? Well, in here, 4 still goes with 4, 2 still goes with 2, and then nothing goes with nothing. So this does pass. And in fact, we're going to be doing, a, you can think of it as doing the exact same thing with the left and right of this 4. The left is nothing. Uh, and that's going to map correctly to the right of this 4 over here. And then the right of this 4 is being mapped to the left of that 4. So in case that was confusing, let me just draw something out real quick. Now, does this match? Well, let's draw our our line again. And if we were to flip this, you see that it does match, that this is uh, symmetric. 
because this 6 will be going with that 6 and then this 5 will be going with that 5. So you can kind of think of still doing this when they don't have uh, any child nodes. But let's bring that back and now let's discuss another possibility. What if instead of a 5 here we had a 7? What do we want to return for this scenario? Well in this case we want to 6 goes to 6 so that's true, 4 goes to 4 that's true, 2 goes to 2 that's still true. Then when, when we look at 5 and we look at 7, what do we notice? Although they are nodes, so it's existent, we also have to look at the values at these nodes. If the values are different, we return false. If the values are the same, we return true. So that's something else that we want to keep in mind. Not only do we care about whether a node is looking at a node, so in this case, if they have the same value. In this case, uh, in this case, we're okay. We will have to do another check. But in the case where one node goes to nothing, this is false. Or nothing goes to a node, this is also false. For cases where a node is looking at another node on the other subtree, on the other side of the tree, then we need to consider the values at these of these nodes. If 2 is looking at another 2 on the other side of the tree, then this is okay. But if a 2 is looking at a node with a value that's different from 2, we know that's not okay. And we have to return false. So we pretty much discussed uh, when we should be returning false and when we should when we should be returning true. Now let's get into how we can solve this problem. So let's first realize that if we were to go left, if we're starting at the root and we were to go left, we would need information on the right subtree. So let's say we're looking at this left two right here. When we iterate or when we call this recursive function that we, we will eventually create, when we call it with this node 2, let's also pass it the right subtree. So it can do that comparison check. Now something you might have noticed here is like although we're going although we're going to the left, we want to pass the right subtree. That's the inverse of the direction we're going in. And that's actually going to hold true no matter what level or what depth we're in for this subtree. Let's say we're looking at 2. Well, if we're looking at 2, we also have information on the right subtree for 1. So these match, therefore we want to continue iterating through this tree and see if there's a mismatch somewhere deeper below. So from the 2, we're going to want to go to the 4. To go to the 4, that's the right child of the 2. So what, what do we pass to 4 now? Well, remember we discussed that whatever direction we take on the left subtree, we're going to be doing the opposite direction on the right subtree. So since 2 has access to this 2 on the right subtree, let's pass it its left child. And then we can do a comparison. Now we, we would want to do something similar since the 4 and the 4 they match. So now let's try the 5. If we're calling the left child of this 4 to get to 5, then we, what we want to pass to 5 is the right child of the 4 on the other side of the tree. So we want to pass it at 7. And in this scenario, this is when we see our first mismatch and we can instantly return false. We would also, uh, we would also see the 6, but I'm not going to draw that out just for this sake. So this is the main idea to solving this problem. 
first we have to figure out when we want to return true and false. So we have to figure out our cases. And then we have to figure out what information do we want to pass to each node. And the main piece of information is that for every node we're looking at, let's also pass it the node on the opposite side of the tree. For, and also for every direction we take, it's the inverse direction in the other side of the tree. So hopefully you guys can see that and understand why it does work. Uh, and now let's actually get into the code and see how we can implement this. So let's first start off with our re recursive function. I'm going to be calling it DFS. I'm going to be passing left and right. So the left is the node on the left subtree, and then the right is the node on the right subtree. In the beginning, I just want to do those simple checks that we can instantly do from the start. And this is checking if one node is actually a node and the other isn't. So if left is a node and right is none or no, or the other way around, where left is not a node and right is, in this scenario, we want to return false. Now, if they are both none and not right, there we go, then we want to return true. If both left and right, if they are not nodes, then we want to return true. Now, one final check is if left.value, the value of the left node, does not equal the value of the right node, then we return false. Else, let's just return whatever uh, the nodes further down gives us. So let's call this function recursively. So we want to pass a left dot left. And if we're going to the left on the left subtree, we have to go right on the right subtree. So re let's return that. And left dot right and then the opposite on the right, which is right.left. The reason we're using and is because we have to make sure that both of these return true. If one of them returns false, then we know the tree in itself is not symmetric. And we want to uh, propagate that false Boolean value further up, since this is a recursive function. And then finally, all we have to do is just recall this function with the root. So let's run this code, see if I made any uh, mistakes. Okay, let's try it with some more test cases. Perfect, now let's submit. And we got it, perfect. So hopefully this was able to help you guys understand this problem. If it did, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.